Hello everybody, this is Andrew Gillum. I know it's been a while since we've had an opportunity to connect, um, but as many of you know, I decided to take some time away to work on myself, uh, deal with some issues that I was having. Uh, I went away to rehab to focus on my issues with alcoholism. Having grown up uh, in a household where my father battled addiction to alcohol and later died from complications from uh, that deadly addiction. Uh, I know well the toll that alcohol can take on not only the individual, but also on the family. Uh, I know well the toll that it took on my father's dreams, on his hopes, uh, on uh, his ambitions. And I knew that if I didn't want to recycle many of those same issues from my children, that I had to do something about it and I had to do it now. Um, with a lot of encouragement from family and the people who love and care about me, I also got into therapy where I could start to talk through some of what was going on with me. Um, I knew that if I had not dealt first with issues of addiction and um, the numbing that I chose with alcohol, there was no way I could start to pull back the layers and talk about what was uh, truly happening underneath. Um, therapy created the outlet for me to be able to do that, to be able to talk to somebody. I had totally underestimated the impact that losing the race for governor had had on um, my life uh, and on the way those impacts started to show up in every aspect of my life. Um, I didn't want to talk emotionally or really deeply about what had happened in the race for governor because it was a constant reminder of failure and my own personal failures. Um, it was a reminder that I had let so many people down. It was a chorus of this voice that I tried for so long to quiet, which said that I wasn't enough, uh, that I wasn't good enough. Uh, all the things that I wanted to suppress and numb and forget about, um, that depression um, uh, 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 around what I was experiencing there, became far too much for me to keep down. And that's the real crazy thing about uh, depression is that uh, a lot of times we think we're dealing with it. We're strong and we'll put on a brave face and it bubbles up on the inside, but eventually what is bubbling up on the inside is gonna come out. And I certainly know what it felt like to see that come out. The, uh, the feelings I was having as a result of what happened in November, the fact that the, the, the office that I thought I could do the most for, for other people and for the state that I love, um, I no longer had access to. But not only that, after having spent 16, 17 years as an elected official, the thing I knew how to do well, the thing that, that gave me an outlet uh, to go and try to change the community in the way that I thought would make it better, all of that was all of a sudden gone. And it really did cause me to think about my own purpose and my own value and what I could contribute, if anything. And I didn't want to have to face all those things. And so I numbed. Um, I tried to suppress. I tried to ignore. And as I said, those things come up and they have a way of, 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 of showing out. So I did the one thing that I knew that I knew I could do, and that was I got busy. For those of you on the outside, you were looking at me and you saw me on television. You saw me giving speeches and traveling and, you know, posting on Instagram and Facebook like I was living my best life. Um, and in truth, I was perfecting what it meant to wear the mask, um, suffering and silence uh, because I uh, simply could not bring myself to deal square on or what was happening uh, more deeply inside of me. Um, if there was a lesson to learn, if there was something I would want you to take from me, it would be don't be like me. Uh, don't suffer in silence. Um, get access to the help that you need. Um, so many of us, you know, think that uh, we got to perpetrate this image of perfection. I know I did. 
this image of strength, this image of I've got it all together. But the truth is nobody has it all together. That's the big secret. All of us are struggling and trying and and clawing at trying to be something else uh, when we really ought to be trying to just be at home in ourselves. And that's really the journey that I'm on right now. Um, um, this 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 very you know deep down desire uh, to want to be a whole and complete and indivisible person, not having to be one thing in one place and one thing in another and a different person. You know, uh, uh, when I'm in this environment and in this setting. Uh, and I know that all of us struggle with different layers of that. While my stuff had to be, you know, public and, you know, cause, you know, great embarrassment and lots of rumors, false, some true. Um, um, the shame that I felt from all of that, from the harm that I had caused was 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 tearing me up. Um, I needed real help to try to unpack that. Uh, it's one thing to feel guilty for a harm you feel you may have caused someone. That's how you know you're human. That's how you know you're not a, a, a sociopath. Um, uh, but, 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 but shame is something completely different. Shame is like kudzu. It takes over you from the inside out. It has no real meaning and redeemable purpose other than to keep you from being the person you need to be other than stopping you from being your truest self, other than keeping you from your own purpose and promise, um, it has no other purpose. It has no other meaning. It has no other desire. And so get rid of shame. Forget about shame. Um, 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 I know it took me quite a while to try to process my way through that. Um, there's so much going on in the world. You know, we got covid um, COVID hit very close to home for us. I watched my mother battle with uh, that virus for over a month as we watched on helplessly, not sure how that whole thing was going to turn out, man. Take care of yourself. Um, there's a lot of pressure there. There's pressure with what we're seeing right now in the country around this Black Lives Matter movement and anti-blackness. I know as a black man, you know, what it means just to have to Convince people that your life has meaning. Convince people that, you know, your life has purpose, uh, not to be set above anybody, but just to be treated on a level that's equal with everybody else around you. Um, that's a lot of pressure. And I think it sometimes causes us to look for other ways to uh, uh, to try to numb and put ourselves in a different mindset and do some mind shift. Uh, but y'all, this thing is killing us. Depression is killing us. Suffering in silence is, is literally taking so many of our lives. And um, I would just want you not to have to experience what I had to experience to get to a place where you can try to begin the work to being at your best and to becoming your best self. Um, I want to thank those of you who reached out, who sent letters and words and texts of encouragement um, from the simplest to the most profound, um, one that stuck out particularly was someone who told me in the midst of my lowest point to be kind to myself. It just said, Andrew, remember to be kind to yourself. Um, so I would share the same thing to you as you're struggling through whatever it is that you're struggling with. Be kind to yourself. There is no perfect person. Um, you know, there's no perfect life. We're all just struggling to get by and to do better. Um, and I know as I'm on my own journey here, um, I hope that I'll be able to share more layers um, that I'm developing and unveloping. Um, I'm doing a lot of writing these days. I'm trying to put on paper a lot of what I'm experiencing um, right now. If, if not to just be cathartic for me, maybe it will help to serve as healing for, you know, for others out there as it, as it works to heal me. Um, it hopefully will be a way in which I can give back. Um, Y'all, I want to thank um, a person uh, who is my life partner, my wife, RJ, a woman who knows everything that I am and everything that I am not. And she chooses to love me anyhow. Um, a woman who is literally God's grace on earth the epitome of grace. Um, um, I can't thank her enough for 
not just standing by me, but encouraging me through this and helping to prop me up on my leaning sides uh, and to tell me that even though we don't know what the future looks like, that she believes um, that this is just the beginning um, and that the best is still yet to come, not just for me, but for her and for for us and for our family. And so I would also pass uh, that on to you to the extent that any of us need to just hear a word that says, you know, our better days are still in front of us. Um, um, This is a tough moment not to be out in the world and contributing. Uh, I have found it particularly difficult, but um, I want you to know that that although I can't be what I would love to be uh, for you and for myself and for my community at this time, um, um, I hope you know that I couldn't be those things because I couldn't be what I needed to be for me first. And that's what I'm working on at this point in time. So um, I hope you'll continue to send good thoughts and good vibes up uh, for me and my family. I do the same for you. Um, I know that there is better, that there is a promise for better. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Take care and God bless.